Good morning and welcome to St. Luke Lutheran Church on this, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. 
for he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord.
My sermon for this morning is taken from the Gospel text. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The great missionary to China, Hudson Taylor, once said, Christ is either Lord over all, or he isn't Lord at all. Indeed, when it comes to Jesus Christ, there is no middle ground. Because of the words and deeds of Jesus Christ, there is no way that we can sit on the fence concerning him. When it comes to Jesus Christ, it's either all or nothing. But despite this truth, I have found that most people are content to stay in the middle ground concerning Christ. And that's precisely what we see in our gospel reading for this morning. We find Jesus with some time to teach his disciples. And so he takes the time to ask them a few questions. He starts by asking them, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And he receives a few different answers. And all the answers are respectful, but all of them fall short of the complete truth. And then, desiring to go deeper, Jesus turns his eyes to the disciples, and he asks them this piercing question, But who do you say that I am? And Peter gives the response, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And here we have it. Here we have the right answer. Here we have the correct answer that has come down from heaven. Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, who has come down from the living God. The living God is the only true God. All other gods are false idols. And this means that Jesus Christ is God himself come down in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the eternal word of God, the creator of all things, sent down from the Father to be the savior of the world. But now that we've heard the correct answer from scripture, let us turn the attention upon ourselves. Imagine, if you will, that Jesus Christ were standing here in this room with you, and he looked at you in the eyes and he asked you, who do you say that I am? How would you respond? The world says Jesus is a prophet. The world says Jesus is a good man. The world says Jesus is a good teacher or a philosopher, and the world may even go so far at times to say that Jesus is a God, one of many. But what about you? Who do you say that Jesus is? Would you answer according to the scriptures, or would you answer according to the world? And we must answer carefully, because believe it or not, this is the most important question that you can ever be asked. And the answer you give will echo for an eternity. Who Jesus is, is more important than any political party or question or problem that we face today. Jesus Christ is simply that important. He is at the center of all things, and how we respond to him is a life or death situation. But believe it or not, as nice and as caring as Jesus is, he is unwilling to let us willingly underestimate him. Jesus is unwilling to let us harbor false beliefs about him. And this is why he said in the Gospel of John, unless you believe I am who I say that I am, you will die in your sins. No, Jesus Christ is much more than a prophet. He's much more than a good teacher or a philosopher or merely a good man. And he's much more than a God, one of many. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ made the claim that he is the only way to heaven. And that is because Jesus Christ and Christ alone is the Savior for all of our sins when he died upon the cross. Jesus Christ and Christ alone defeated death and rose again from the dead. 
This is why the scriptures testified of him. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son does not have life. And so Jesus looks to us today and he asks us, who do you say that I am? Now perhaps you don't believe what the scriptures say about Christ. And if that's the case, then you are in a dire situation. But there is time now for you to turn to Christ, to repent, to ask him to reveal himself to you through prayer and in his word. But if you do believe the orthodox understanding of Christ, if you do believe the scriptures concerning Christ, then the next question for you is, now that you know who he is, what is Christ worth to you? What does he mean to you? You who believe that Jesus is the savior of the world, do you know that he is your savior? You who believe that Jesus is God, do you believe that he is your God? You who believe that Jesus is everything, is he your everything? Don't be content to know as little as you can about him. Do you desire to have more of Christ? Do you want a deeper relationship with him? Then go to him and plead with him from the depths of your heart, O oh Lord, I want to know you, not as the world knows you, but as you have revealed yourself to be. O oh Lord, I want to know you, not as I imagine you to be, but as you are revealed in the Holy Scripture. O oh Lord, I am not content to know you little, but I want to know you deeply. You are everything to me, Jesus Christ. You are my all and all. You are my Savior and my God. And if this is your prayer to Christ, Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all, will make himself known to you and become a deeper reality for you, and you will have a deeper relationship with him by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and keep you safe from all illness and from all evil. Amen. Mm -hmm.